everyone! In today's video, we are going to talk about Kawasaki disease, also known as mucocutaneous lymph node syndrome. Please be sure to like this video, subscribe, and let's jump right in! So, what is Kawasaki disease? Kawasaki disease is a rare but acute heart condition that causes inflammation of the blood vessels and a high fever. It is most commonly seen in boys 5 years old and under, but can occur in little girls as well. Though the cause of Kawasaki disease is unknown, it appears to be caused by an infectious agent. The infection then leads to an alteration in the immune system, causing the immune system to attack the blood vessels of the heart. As a result of this, blood vessels become inflamed and swollen. Most cases of Kawasaki disease occur in late winter or early spring. Now let's talk about signs and symptoms that you may see in the child with Kawasaki disease. As we just stated, Kawasaki disease causes a high fever, so we'll see an elevated temperature of 102 degrees Fahrenheit to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. The child may also seem irritable and lethargic. Their eyes may become inflamed. The child may also have a strawberry-colored tongue, dry, red, and cracked lips. A rash may develop, especially in the trunk and extremities. There may be edema of the hands and feet. The child's joints may appear to be red and swollen. The skin on the fingers and toes peels in layers. Cervical lymph nodes may become enlarged. The child may also report having abdominal or stomach pain. Now, inflammation of the arteries, veins, and capillaries can lead to serious cardiac concerns in the child, such as aneurysms, which is the stretching and bulging of an arterial wall, as well as thrombus, also known as a blood clot. Now, there are three stages of Kawasaki disease. There is acute, subacute, and convalescent. And symptoms may vary depending on the disease stage that the child is in. For example, in the acute phase of Kawasaki disease, the child may have a high fever that doesn't respond to antibiotics or antipyretics. It's actually in the acute phase that the child may begin to exhibit irritability. In the subacute phase, the child's fever may resolve, but irritability continues. In this phase, the child is at the greatest risk for aneurysms. In the convalescent phase, the child's symptoms are gone, but they are still in this phase until their energy and appetite are restored and their lab values in behavior return to baseline. Now let's talk about how Kawasaki disease is diagnosed. In order for a child to be diagnosed with Kawasaki disease, they must have an elevated temperature and at least four of the symptoms we mentioned earlier. Lab results may reveal an elevated white blood cell count, and an elevated erythrocyte sedimentation rate. During the subacute stage, the platelet count increases, which may lead to clotting and other cardiac issues. An echocardiogram may be completed and may show cardiac involvement. Now let's discuss the medical treatment for Kawasaki disease. Kawasaki disease is treated with a high dose of intravenous immunoglobulin therapy to reduce symptoms and prevent coronary artery abnormalities. The child is prescribed aspirin to control inflammation and fever. The child may have to take aspirin for as long as one year in low doses to prevent the risk of clotting. Now let's talk about what you would do as the nurse to care for the pediatric patient with Kawasaki disease. Nursing care for the child with Kawasaki disease is really centered on managing the symptoms. Closely monitor the child's temperature, cardiac status, intake and output, and daily weight. If the child is prescribed immunoglobulin therapy, teach the family that the child should not be given any live vaccines such as measles, mumps, and rubella for three to six months after immunoglobulin therapy has ended. This is because immunoglobulin therapy stops the body from producing antibodies. The nurse should also teach the family about side effects of immunoglobulin therapy such as nausea, dizziness, chest tightness, headache, and back pain. The nurse is going to want to encourage extra fluids as well as soft foods. And remember we said that the child with Kawasaki disease may have dry and cracked lips. So the nurse is going to want to provide mouth and lip care to decrease soreness. Encourage passive range of motion exercises. This will help to increase joint movement. 
Also keep in mind that irritability may make it tough for the nurse to care for the child with Kawasaki disease. So the nurse is going to want to promote rest and create a quiet environment for the child to help decrease irritability. The nurse should also provide emotional support to the family and encourage healthy coping mechanisms while the child is healing. Include in the discharge planning information about the disease, symptoms, and how long symptoms are expected to last. Also, discuss follow-up treatments and visits, medication routines, and adverse effects. Most children recover from Kawasaki disease without any long-term effects. Alright everyone, I hope that this video was helpful. Be sure to visit nursingtonurture.com for promo codes, merch, as well as more educational content. Remember to never give up and as always, thanks for watching.